Welcome back travelers and magic players. In this episode we're going to take a look at the Jace story. You are Jace Bellerin, a 13 year old living on one of the towering mage rings of Virn. You're natural at mind magic, able to hear the thoughts of those around you. It's difficult to connect with others as you are painfully aware that they think you're a freak. Yeah, I mean, how would you guys react if, you know, some kid in your class or whatever, you know, whether you're in high school or college or wherever you are, or, work, you know, older adult at work, you know, one of your colleagues, we'll just say that, then it, it encompasses every age, you know, just has this weird telepathy thing. He can make people do what he wants, and he can read what other people are thinking. Yeah, that'd be kind of freaky. That would definitely be kind of freaky. You would never know if he's manipulating you or not, so... Um, this is kind of his story. Uh, he gets he gets bombarded by some bullies really quick, and um, they try to, to off him, but he's able to manipulate one of them into saving him instead, which is very interesting and confusing for, for them, I should say. So, then some other wise mage guy kind of shows up, and he, he kind of realizes what's going on, because he's pretty good at, at this sort of mind game himself as well. And he, he offers to help control and teach you, you know, to what's going on. Um, and then as you get a little bit better, he starts helping you do things for, for politics, you know, get some some uh, shenanigans going, getting information from, from different people and, and uh, sabotage some intelligence lines if you can. Since nobody will really be able to do anything about it if you're, you know, just doing it all mentally. And then he wants you to do it to other people as well, you know, not just the bad sides, but also the good sides. And and uh, there's some interesting things happening as Jay starts to realize that perhaps he's the bad guy after all, and he's just been using you. So now you gotta now you gotta go up against him and try and take care of him before he takes over too much. After two years of training, you've learned the truth. You've been a go in between or er, as a go between selling intel. He's even concealed your nature as a planeswalker, so he knew it, but you didn't quite know it yet. And then he tries to take care of you, so... Exhaust his mental resources by making him draw from an empty library. So, in this match, since it's a contest of wits and not of brawn, uh, we have to find a way to win this game by getting rid of all of his cards. So we need to do that the best way possible for us. We'll just keep whatever hand it gives us. It's gonna be a quest of who can empty one's thoughts quicker. So it'll start off a little bit slower as both, both players ramp up in their mana base a little bit. Fog Bank, normally a very, very annoying and powerful creature. Uh, not going to make too much of an impact in this particular match. It'll just guarantee that I won't get him down to zero life, that's for sure. So, a couple of options we could do here. No point in playing the Phantasm, so I guess we'll just play the Mage. Again, I don't really want to zoom in on cards too much because it slows the AI down. In an online multiplayer match against a, a human, it won't. The clock will keep ticking on you, so we'll have to just look when the cards are at the bottom of my hand right here instead. So right now we've got a, a combat trick, which isn't going to come into play too much here. And then uh, I guess the Phantasm is the only other thing we can cast right now, so we'll just let that be. No point in attacking, he'll just block. We don't want to risk him doing something weird like, you know, bouncing a tapped creature or target attacking creature. When I say bounce, I mean do something to return it to my hand or top of library or something like that. It just slows you down. It's really annoying. Don't know what he's capable of yet. Just yet. This, however, is going to be a little bit of a problem. So when he draws a card, since this is under his control, opponents, which in this case would be me, puts the top two cards of my library in the graveyard. If they're both non-lands that share a color, do it again. So, and then later on in the game he can force it to happen multiple times. So, I am officially on a much more significant clock than he is. I need to find a way to ramp this up here. Um, I know I can't win by combat, 
but I don't really want to draw, like, since this is, this is one of those things. I need to draw cards to get answers to beat him quicker, but also the quicker I draw cards, the sooner I'm going to die, too. So, it's kind of a, kind of a tough scenario right here, but I'm just going to have to go for it, because that's, that's my path to victory. I'm going to have to just fully commit. I guess I may as well attack, if you can only block one. I'm not going to get 40 damage in there, but... Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, in theory, I could have bounced his fog bank and gotten an extra couple of points in. Alright, it removed a phantom warrior, who normally would be very cool, but he'd be a really slow clock here. Oh, gosh. Ah, there we go. This will help big time. Alright, so he's milled me a couple of times. A bunch of land, though, right down there. And this is going to be a huge advantage for me. I get rid of half of his graveyard just right off the top. He's going to lose a good 23 cards right there, essentially for free. So I definitely want to play that as soon as possible. The longer I take, uh, the less effective it's going to be. There's not really much else I can do that benefits me anyway. So hopefully he won't counter a spell it. Let's just traumatize him right now. Boom. Levels the playing field just a little bit. Unsummon. Yeah, no real reason to go with attacks, but just doing it anyway. Want to at least play the game as if as if it was real. Get as close to multiple paths to victory as you can. Um, I can pretty much discard anything. I'll just discard the turn the tide, because I don't really care. I'm still going to need something else to speed this process up, though. Because he's going to be milling me, yeah, four times as fast as I'll be able to mill him. So I need to I need to get something to do about this. And quick. So far, I'm just drawing creatures, which will not help me, unfortunately. Normally, this would definitely be a very powerful and defensive hand, but I need to draw something to do that's going to win me this game instead. So, if we're looking, every time he draws a card, I lose two. You know, it's a minimum 15 turns right off the bat. And uh, it's going to take me quite a while to play all these creatures and try and get combat in there. It's going to take me a lot of turns. I'm probably better off drawing cards. But... Hmm. I don't know, you know what? I think we might... We might switch up our plan here. I know we're not going to win by combat, but I don't want to bother just drawing one card and speeding up his victory either, so maybe I can get there. We'll see. I'll be able to bounce it again next turn. I suppose perhaps instead of playing him, I could have played something more powerful, but... It's just going to take forever to get 37 points out when he has a fog bank. It's not going to work, is the moral of the story. We're going to have to play this one again. Yeah. Even though I got rid of 23 of his cards in one shot, he's, uh, he's essentially caught up. Caught right up. So, we'll bounce this guy again. Yeah, I definitely did not play that the optimal way. I should have played the dragon first and got no damage in last turn. And then I would have had a bunch of extra damage this time with one more bounce coming up with even more damage to follow. So I played that wrong. I played this really bad. This is pretty bad after all. Who knows? I guess he's almost half dead, but... At this point, he's going to start blocking my fastest creature. And he's really ramping up this, uh, this clock here. Oh, that was a double. I got multiple cards. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh, yes, it did. The Cancel and the Azure Mage. Gosh, I need something to mill him with. This is not working for me. I've got less than eight turns. I potentially have four turns, depending on how he wants to play this. So maybe I am going to get there by damage, even though it told me I wasn't going to. <laughs> I wonder how close it would be if I had played it right. It would 
definitely be quicker. He'd be below 20, and that'd make things very interesting. Oh, was that another double? No, it was not. Okay. Neither was that. Just play as many flyers as we can. Oh, he's going to counter that one. That's fine. Because this guy is the more powerful one anyway. Hmm, maybe we can get there. I think we might actually get there. If I would have... Yeah. If I would have played it properly, he... I don't know if he'd be dead yet, but he'd be very, very close. We'll, we'll see if the game even lets me win this way, because it told me it wouldn't. So who knows? But it didn't give me any other choice. <laughs> I didn't have any way of milling him. You know, there's, there's, a, there we go. I got a couple of these as well that he's milling me with, but not, not too many options here. So let's see. This is going to be my last chance to attack. So I may as well draw a card, see if it gives me something that can help me win this turn even more. Well, there's a tutelage, but too little too late, unfortunately. Um, no point in drawing one more card either, so... We're just gonna have to... See if maybe he'll be silly and counterspell it or something. He's not gonna have a counterspell it too, that's old time. Alright, let's see what happens if the game is gonna let me win by combat or no. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Even though it totally told me that it wasn't going to happen. I'll be darned. Well, that's interesting. Cool. It is possible. Oh, and I got... Uh, what did I sacrifice? Oh, when he targeted the Drake, it says sacrifice. So I didn't activate it myself. It still happened. So that's cool. Part of, an, uh, part of my daily quest... Want to duel with five or few? Nice, a couple of achievements in one in one uh, game over here. So that was very very beneficial for me. And was dealt no damage yourself. Look at that. That's a sweet looking card. So alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, your duel with Alhameret shatters both of your minds. In the process, your Planeswalker spark ignites, sending you to the plane of Ravnica. Lucky Jace, man, going to Ravnica? Whew. Leaving precious few fragments of your memory intact. As you reassemble your identity, you come to see this plane-spanning city as a place you can finally call home. Very cool. Very cool. So, thank you everybody for watching. And next video, we will watch and play through Liliana's. So, thank you for watching, everybody. Take it easy. Hope to see you soon. Peace.